Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Baltimore Ravens and the Green Bay Packers. With that, let's get up to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Standing by for the call from Venerable Lambeau Field, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. This place first opened way back in 1957. We are inside legendary Lambeau Field here in Green Bay. No team means more to a city than the Packers to Green Bay. And this was the scene a few moments ago as the green and gold made their way out of the historic tunnel. They're ready to go as they get set to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Mason Crosby of the Packers has it teed up, and off we go from Lambeau. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So here come the Ravens with their first look on offense. They'll have Lamar Jackson calling the shots, the former Heisman Trophy winner from Louisville. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Jackson now off the bootleg. He's got it to Ingram, complete. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way, and really we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. On the counter, Ingram. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Ingram. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Following the penalty, it's first and five, and you got to think offensively, all kinds of options. Hill looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain there on first and five, and it leaves him with a more standard second down.
Second and five now. Jackson, Roberts has it. And down inside the 15 he goes. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 13-yard line. Well, they're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in, with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about this and, hey, you know, how are you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't I, seem to want it. I didn't offer it. mine. You, know, you, were, you were the <laughs> smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Just a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They run. It's Mark Ingram. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. What an advantage having an elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Now they're coming up on play number eight of this opening drive, but they're looking at a third and long. From the gun, Jackson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. Tucker's kick is good. And the Ravens strike first at three zip. So a nice drive on the road. You come in, you take the ball down, you get three points. Yeah, points are a must on an opening drive, right? So they moved it down efficiently, got it done. I think that bodes well for their chances moving forward in this one. Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. This fielded at the two. Then he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. They'll be led out by their highly decorated quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. So pinpoint, so accurate. Sometimes we forget just how good he is. We start to take him for granted because he always places the ball exactly where it needs to be for his receivers. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 27. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. And now the offensive starters for the Packers. It's tough to be an offensive lineman in Green Bay because their quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, knows how to keep plays alive and often extends them for three, four, five, six seconds. But David Bakhtiari, his left tackle, he does it as well as anyone could ever expect. Excellent footwork. Knows that the plays are going to stay alive for a long time. Often will get two or three blocks on the same play. Rodgers with a give. It's Aaron Jones. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. 
The starters now defensively for Baltimore. And free safety Earl Thomas has a list of accomplishments as long as anyone's arm. But the thing I think about with him at all times, no matter what happens in front of him on the defensive end of the ball, he's back there to erase any mistakes that happen. The top guy in the league, as far as I'm concerned, in that category. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Off the play fake to Jones. Here's Rodgers. And able to find Alan Lazard. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Give him 18 on that play. And Green Bay has the first as well. When you give up points on the opening drive, in this case a field goal, you'd hate to go three and out. They avoid that. They do, and it's also walking that fine line mentally, too, as a coach, isn't it? Because you want to emphasize to your team exactly what you said. All right, we gave up a field goal. Let's go back and at least equal that, guys. But if we don't, you don't want them to feel like it's the end of the world either. Nice that they were able to pick up the first down there, help them relax a little bit. Go, go, go. From midfield, here's Rodgers. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Give him 18 on that play, and Green Bay has the first as well. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that open things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Now a first down carry by Jones. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Here's a four-receiver look now. Three of those guys out to the right side on second and eight. Throwing now is Rodgers. It's caught here by Adams. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 19. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Into the red zone. It's Rodgers. And that's complete to Adams. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. From 19 yards away. And the Packers have taken the lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right, RAC? Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. He's got it. We'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. So this drive spans seven plays, and the result, a Green Bay score. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. 
Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that would help him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> what a catch and one-handed, and I'm starting to lose my awe about the play, and maybe I shouldn't. How much of this is the player? How much of it is the glove? Well, those gloves, they do have a little grip to them, they don't they? Little... Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Darnell Savage, and they will set up sharp at their own 41-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. Well, what do you think? You get the ball off the turnover near the middle of the field. You take a shot here on the first play? You know I'm big on that. I love when I have great field position after a turnover. I feel like I might have a little bit off balance. I prefer to take a shot, but a lot of coaches will tell you you only do it if you trust the guy who's got the football in his hands, meaning if it's not there, he won't force it downfield and maybe turn into an interception. He'll go to the check down, go to a second option, and go ahead and take the play that's in front of him. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Here's Jones. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Throwing is Rodgers on third down. The left side throw complete to Adams. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. Rodgers finding Adams for a Packer first. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? They should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. On first down, Rodgers. That's caught by Geronimo Allison. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. Give him 18 on that play, and Green Bay has the first as well. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. So first and 10 now from the 30. Hey, watch the slant. This is Jones. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there to swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. A first carry now for the BYU man. It's Jamal Williams. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. That was Shades of Tennessee Volunteer football back in the 80s with Charles Davis coming up from the secondary to make the tackle for a loss. You mean my teammates doing that, right? <laughs> because they would tell you, my coach would say, where is that tape? I want to see that. But how about the complete package there? Not just playing the pass, but being a willing tackler and making a really nice play. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Set the tone, defense. Set the tone, defense. Let's go. <laughs> Shotgun now for Rodgers. He's got the hook up to Lazard. 
And they move this all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. And you see zone defense, and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call. You've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Second and goal from inside the five. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. He lost four there, and it's third down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? From the gun, it's Rodgers. The connection made, it's Graham. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. A gain of five, but not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. So on now for the Packers is their all-time leading scorer, Mason Crosby. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. No, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Lamar Jackson marching back onto the field. He'll look to shake off the interception on the opening drive. He should at least be comforted that it resulted in three, not six. And if I were him, I would be the guy all the way out on the field greeting my defense now, saying thanks a lot. He held them to a field goal after I turned it over. That's a big defensive stand for them. He needs to go out now and make up for what he did on the first drive. Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Jackson from the shotgun. This will be caught by Brown. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, yeah, bro. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. 
Now a play fake here on first down. And that is incomplete here. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. On second down, Ingram. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Ravens get a new set of downs, give him 17 on that pickup. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. Ingram again, a first down carry. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. On second and 11 now, Jackson. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Ten three, our score after one here on EA Sports. So first and second down went in the wrong direction. They'll try to do better here on third and 13. From the gun, it's Jackson. He finds Roberts complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Back to the running game. It's Ingram. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. No gain on the play there. Second down. I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. Actually broke that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of touched that you actually wrote something like that down. <laughs> I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they wanted to, but I think we'll see more of as this game goes along because they want to continue to take care of that young QB. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Well, there's an example of patience being rewarded. Ran the ball on first down and got stuffed. Most people would scream, throw the ball here in this situation. They stayed with their roots, stayed with running the football, and they got rewarded. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. That winds up being a four-yard loss and leads to fourth down. Certainly not what the offense wanted down here, going in the wrong direction. Yeah, well, look who got involved. I mean, when you got a strong safety who can drop into the box, never needs an invitation to be one of those guys in run defense, does he? Wakes up every morning just a little bit ticked off. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. And Tucker's kick right there, it's good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. 
No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Give them nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. On play action, now Rodgers. And he hits his target, the tight end Lewis. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. And when I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Normally when you see a short gain in the middle of a 3-4 defense, go ahead and pat the nose tackle on the back because he's holding things up and taking on extra blockers, which allows one of the inside linebackers to roam free and make the tackle. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. Back deep is DeAnthony Thomas. And a great job on special teams to down it, as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. Mark Ingram now gears up to help lead this offense back out there. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Jackson now 7 of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And now look at this, big game, but a fumble. But it looked like a Raven was able to get in there, and they will indeed keep the possession. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. 
A tenth carry here for Mark Ingram. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Jackson to the right side and complete to Hurst. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now it's Jackson. He's going to find his tight end, Boyle. And they move this all the way down to the nine. He got 29 yards that time. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. They're mounting a nice drive here. Good chunk of yardage there again. O-line, they've been solid this drive. They have that look about them right now that says, if you do anything but run the ball behind us, you're crazy. They have really moved it well on this drive, and they want to finish it off the same way. On second and goal. Jackson, and he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. From three yards out, and the Ravens have retaken the lead. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And this one's right there, and that pushes the lead to 13-10. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told, and it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Kick it away following the touchdown. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Number 12 back out there. Aaron and his Packer teammates set to begin their drive. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. They'll run it with Jones. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten when probably everyone was expecting him to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, 
what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Throwing is Rodgers. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision, and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Working from the gun, Rodgers. And his throw is incomplete. Devontae Adams, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight <laughs> ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. The reception good for seven. It's third down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert, but right now looking at a third and three. Rodgers now to throw. And Graham's got it, complete. Two former All-Pros connecting. Rodgers fighting his tight end, Graham. Packer first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Rodgers now. 13 of 16 throwing the football. It's first and 10. Rodgers again now. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A well-executed 22-yard game. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, Running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off. Sometimes you're just rounding it. Sometimes there's a fake. Sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. Rodgers now on first down. Got a man. That's Allison. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now Jones. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Green Bay touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run, and the Packers have retaken the lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Now Crosby for the point after. And that will make this a four-point game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And the last play in the drive was a touchdown run by Aaron Jones. the touchdown. Here's Crosby to kick it away. 
This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Dean Lowry able to collapse the pocket, get to him, and drop him for a loss of a yard. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sad. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> After the sack here, second and 11. You can't block me. You can't block me. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock. You control the ball. And that way, you often control the game. The Ravens on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. From the gun, Jackson. This one complete to Ingram. Call it a one-yard gain on the play. And it'll be fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Tyler Irvin back deep. This is taken at about the 14. A good return there, 17 yards. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 12, and the Packers have the first. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of their yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Hey, I'm coming, I'm coming. Now Williams. Defensively a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. On second down now, it's Jones. 
And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. On third down, Rodgers. He wants it all for the end zone. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Devontae Adams with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. Extra point try now for Crosby. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's going to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. A gain of six there on first. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Jackson trying to hustle his unit up quickly to the line of scrimmage. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson, it's caught by Roberts. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Jackson now, 13 of 16 throwing the football. It's first and 10. Jackson's throw on target to Willie Sneed, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 10 yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Jackson on first down. 
Snead's got it. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Jackson and the offense come up first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Again, Jackson. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. Montrevious Adams, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. They'll fake the give to Ingram, now Jackson. He rifles one that's intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. 20. And into the end zone, it's a pick six and a Packer touchdown. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs. Almost becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. Now Crosby for the point after. And the lead is up to 18 now. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Just 11 seconds to go in the half as they have it first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Throwing is Jackson. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. play of the half here. It's Jackson. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that'll be incomplete. 
Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone. It's the Packers set to receive the kick. They've got the lead as well as we are underway in the third quarter. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. To throw is Rodgers. It's caught here by Adams. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. It's a gain of 16 and a first down for the green and gold. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. Off the play fake to Jones. Here's Rodgers. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. On second down, it's Jones. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a gain of 16 and a first down for the green and gold. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Rodgers now on first down. Open here is Allison. That's complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now Rodgers. The connection made, it's Graham. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Jimmy Graham, 31 yards. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. 
Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails? Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Extra point try now for Crosby. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A drive that time of six plays. And the result, a Green Bay score. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Quick throw taken in by Sneed. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. It's a gain of four, and it's third down. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. Check, check, check. check 13. From the gun, it's Jackson. He can run for it, and he will. So no sack, he gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it'll still bring up a fourth down. Well, the defensive guys won't be real happy because there won't be a sack on this play because he did get back to the line of scrimmage. But what a job they did overall. Hemmed him in and gave him nowhere to go with the football. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Twelve yards on the return that time, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Devontae Adams in the Packer offense heading back out. He's having a day here in quarter number three. Over 100 yards, couple touchdowns. Every receiver's hope for when they head into that game in the National Football League. And his team is loving what he's giving them. Of course, the yardage is terrific, but I think it's what you mentioned, the two touchdowns. That's the big one because he's paying off his results downfield. And still more time here. Third quarter, we'll see what else he has in store for us. Give him 15 there, and the Packers have a first. First. When we see another great performance like this out of Aaron Rodgers, you have to chuckle thinking that his only FBS offer was a walk-on at Illinois. And now he's the pride of Butte Junior College, of course at Cal. And I remember watching him play at Cal, and he would run seven-on-seven -seven drills. 
angry if the ball ever hit the ground and it didn't do it very often. Nice quarterback now. Over 300 yards now for the game and time to improve on that as he's got a first and 10. Jones. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it can be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. You can't block me. You can't. They'll go again to Jones. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. And he finds his tight end, Graham. And they'll get this across midfield, but not nearly close to a first down as he stopped at the 48. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half, it gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. The Packers bringing in an extra member of the secondary here to try for the third down stop. Jackson from the shotgun. He's got a team room complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. On first down, it's Ingram. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But if the strong safety position end up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Now that was well defended, and as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. Check my 50. We got to get the ball. D, get the ball right here. 
Third and two. Here's Jackson. And that is incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Now Aaron Rodgers and the offense heading back onto the field. And you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if we can drive the bus here again on this drive. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? From the 22, here's second and eight. Come on, D. Watch 36. There's Rodgers to throw. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. Got to love the catch. I think you got to love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great. And they're fun. They're becoming a little more ho-hum, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And I know that it sounds like we're taking credit away from the guys, and we don't mean that at all. They really work hard on this one-handed catch thing. But I think the gloves have to be helping in a big way. Williams. Yeah, Williams is going to be stopped short of the yellow line. He did not get there. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for Green Bay. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And they begin this drive in very precarious field position inside their own five. And remember, this is a defense that's already scored once in this game, so you've got to really take care and make sure that you're blocking these guys to try and wedge the ball out from the shadow of your own end zone. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room. If you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Throwing on second and eight. Jackson, and incomplete. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time, and it'll bring up third down. Maybe a little over-anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't, because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. He finds Roberts complete. And they work this out past the 25. That'll put him at 66 receiving yards now for the game. And he's got a first down. Jackson now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. 
And they work this well upfield across the 45. 20 yards on both of those plays back to back there. They are moving now. It's another first down. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. tackled inside the 40 not quite to the 35 the Ravens get a new set of downs give them 17 on that pickup pretty nice play here they go read option read the defensive end and when he collapsed down inside how about the quarterback pulling it keeping it and not only getting to the second level but picking up some really nice yardage very very well read So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Now Ingram, he's been busy today. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. And now Jackson will look to throw it. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Zadarius Smith leading the surge there as he drops him for a loss of six. But nothing takes to start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. On third down, Jackson. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. They could not contain Kenny Clark as he gets home for the sack. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? On, no. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. Excellent placement. And off that bounce, Charles, I didn't know where it was going to go. It can be an inexact science as to where they place it, but they say the two-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how they really determined that. And let's face it, at the end of that play, one side's going to be happy. The other team's going to be unhappy. It's like, what do they do, shorten the hypotenuse? I mean, how do they figure that out? You know that stuff. You're the smart guy. Oh, that's you, partner. They begin the drive with Williams. And he's able to get him a small cushion before being taken down at the five, a gain of three. And while they hope to continue this drive, it's really already mission accomplished. They've given enough space now that if they have to punt the ball, they've done so with that first run. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. Not a whole lot of room to maneuver there, and I think that's because everyone took care of their responsibilities, filled their gaps, held their place. No place for him to run. Yeah, it looked good. Everything got funneled to the nose tackle. They swallowed him up. Rodgers to throw on third down. 
Open man is Allison complete. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters in the books. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. They'll run on first down. Williams, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. On play action, Rodgers. He's going to air one out. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. Play action. Now it's Rodgers. Got a man. That's Allison. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give them 18 on that play, and Green Bay has the first as well. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. They go back to the ground with Williams. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they won't put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. On second down. It's Jones. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. And Rodgers is going to go down. He sacked. Michael Pierce in all of his 340-pound glory gets the sack. Defense went 3-4. They got some push from the inside. And this is something in a 3-4 you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack, he's usually responsible or ends up getting double teamed and sometimes triple teamed. How about him working his way back and putting the big guy on the ground? Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked down and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. Kenny Clark, the big D tackle there to make the stop. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Ingram again. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. 
So after a run like that, I will guarantee that the head coach is saying to himself, maybe even over his headsets to the rest of the staff, where was that all game long? <laughs> we needed that. That's the type of run we planned for going into the game. Didn't get much of that, but let's move it forward. Let's build on it, get ready for the next week, and let's go play. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Now the pass brought in by Roberts. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Jackson now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. From the gun, Jackson. He's going to find his tight end, Boyle. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they march off another 15 against your squad. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And he don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. Again on second and ten, it's Jackson. It's Hill, complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 33. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage. And that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10, down at the 33. Pass from Jackson, complete to Ingram. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and it'll make it a second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Now it's Jackson. It's complete to Snead. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Jackson, Roberts has it. And they'll get this down to the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with the bigger guy to try and use size? Can I go with a, try go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. And a 20th carry now for Ingram. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the Ravens cut into that lead. The touchdown was scored by the runner, but the offensive line, they feel like it's theirs. They blocked that one up perfectly, allowed him easy access to the end zone. Tucker now for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. 
That time, a nine-play drive. And it's Mark Ingram who caps it off with a touchdown run. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Packers get set to go. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer. Create space for our runners. And let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And from the 25, they work this to the 29. A gain of four. Earl Thomas in on the stop. Well, not a big gain with that play, but what they're doing is they're spreading the defense out, probing a little bit, and what they're hoping probably is that later in the game, they can create a matchup that they can exploit for big yardage later. On second down, Williams. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. He shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play, how about that tackle we just saw? Pretty nice. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Here's Thomas. That's a 49-yard punt, eight, though, on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs at a first down. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into some windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. To throw is Jackson. This one complete to Ingram. Give him seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Here's Jackson to throw. He's got his man. It's Andrews. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. This game just keeps evolving and changing, doesn't it? you got a tight end who can move around a lot, not necessarily using a big body on him. Sometimes you take a corner, a better cover guy, and put him on him and try and take him out of the game as we've seen in this one. You're exactly right. They've taken him out of the game. That was just his first catch. Big reason they're losing right now. Now it's Jackson. 
And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Just nothing there again. He's been sacked multiple times. We've seen the interceptions, of course. Uh, he's really been through the ringer, hasn't he? And what we've seen is a defense is well-coordinated. The front and the back really in sync. The front putting on the pressure. The backside being ball hawks and picking passes off. To throw on second and 10. Jackson. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact. No call. And it's third down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. To throw on third down, Jackson. And an alley to run. He may try and run for this. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 25-yard line. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. On the draw, this is Ingram. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. The run defense, they have been porous at times today, but not that last go around. No, they really tightened it up, didn't they? They finally got themselves a win because all game long we've seen them get gashed. This time they played the responsibilities, played their keys, and made a nice stop. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. From the gun, Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. The Ravens on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and eight. Now Jackson. It's caught by Roberts. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And what can they do here on second and goal? Three red zone trips so far have yielded two touchdowns and a field goal. They'll run here with Edwards. And they'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Taking it in from seven yards away. And the Ravens get a bit closer. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. End result, touchdown. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And that one makes this an 11-point deficit now. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And in the end, it's capped off by a seven-yard run. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this one's going to be covered up by the Packers' hands team. 
Well, for a second there, I had flashbacks to a few years ago, the NFC Championship game for the Packers, but here they're able to hold on. And many things changed in Green Bay after that game. Personnel, people coaching, the whole deal. And in this case, they get it done. No fail like they had in Seattle. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. What was once a really comfortable lead is not so comfortable anymore. Down to a two-score game after they've seen a pair of touchdowns go against them on those last two drives. Yeah, they've got to find a way to get off of autopilot right now, okay? Get back to what was working for them earlier. Understand that they still have a two-score lead, so it's not dire, but at the same time, okay, guys, let's mash the gas. Let's get going again. Let's have some fun. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Rodgers with a give. It's Aaron Jones. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Like any team, they would have loved to have had more yards on that run, but it looks like they just want to get to the two-minute warning and see what they want to do after that. And defensively, Baltimore's in a dime look here on third. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. He sets up the screen to Jones. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Check 50, check 50. Off the play fake to Jones. Here's Rodgers. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Rodgers looking to throw. It's caught here by Adams. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. He's got the hook up to Lazard. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, a chip shot here. The kick by Crosby is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. 
This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Let's go. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down by two touchdowns, 90 seconds remaining. Field goals, useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. Got a man, it's Brown. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. A good pick up there, a 22. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. It went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. From midfield now, here's Jackson. Robert's got it. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That one good for 26 and a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Roberts with it over the middle. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Jackson on first down, and that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. And he's got it. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Packers are winners here as we say so long from Lambeau.